It's been one of the coldest autumns in years in Montreal. And for some people, the early frost is reason to get outside and enjoy the snow. Inside the shop, the early winter has caused mayhem as everyone slides in to have their snow tires installed. But the only white stuff that Nick is interested in is the arctic white paint that's about to be sprayed onto his beloved 1970 Challenger. Okay, we're off down to the body shop. We're gonna go see how my uh, Kowalski project is coming along. So let's go take a trip down there and uh, see how far he's gone with the car. Apparently he's got all the panels lined up and uh, he's got to sand it down, lined up, I guess. And uh, he asked me to come down and uh, see the car. So here we are, we're on our way down. It's never easy for Nick to get away from the shop, especially on a busy weekend. And just as he's about to take off, something comes in on the flatbed that needs his attention first. We just got a scissor lift from, uh, I bought it from a friend of mine. We have another one, 21 flags to put up this weekend. So I need to go way up here. Our ceiling is pretty high, so we're gonna use that as a safety uh, feature to uh, install our flags. I come from around the world, and uh, it's gonna take some time. So I gotta find a way to rope them from one end to the other. So we're gonna use the scissor lift that we bought from a friend of ours, and then put up the other 21 flags I gotta put up for tomorrow. The lift will help Nick get all his viewers' flags up safely. And check it out, Tesla fans. There's an electric vehicle in the shop. I'm on my way to my uh buddy's body shop that has my uh, Kowalski Challenger project. So we're on our way there, but I gotta go see him because he wants to paint the car next week. I believe he's got the fenders and doors lined up. So he's asked me to go by and look at it before he gives it a, a paint job on the uh, Monday, Tuesday. So we're on our way there, gonna go see him, and uh, we'll take it from there. Nick thinks his car is getting painted next week, but his body man has planned a little surprise for him today. He's been working around the clock, and the car is ready for paint this morning. I'm gonna get it back at my shop. I'm gonna make a space for it. I'll put a cover on it, and then slowly and slowly, I'll be starting restoring all the little pieces that belong to the car. Build an engine, overhaul the transmission, overhaul the Dana, suspension, interior, and so forth, and so on, and whatever. So it's gonna take time. I'm gonna try to do it a uh, piece at a time, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, I remember bringing that home. Uh, I remember bringing that back here uh, to my shop when I picked it up and, uh, you know, I said, boy, is this car rough. But anyways, we took it all off. We started from scratch and uh, we changed the quarter panels and the floor pans, the trunk pan, and the frame rails in the back, inner fenders in the front and uh, so forth. And uh, now everything's lined up, I hope, as we're going to go see and uh, we'll see how good it looks. Wow, check this out. I didn't know he had it already done. God, he works quick. Look at that, eh? Alpine white, eh? Check it out. It's like putting a puzzle together. I used to play with little model cars. I used to put the, all kinds of little pieces together. Check it out. Don't touch anything, man. Truck lid, doors, balance, hood. It's all here. Wow. Look at that, eh? This is something. God, you gotta put all these pieces back on and make sure you don't scratch them as you put it, as you put it together. Inside out. 
This is beautiful. There it is. And this is one of my favorite hoods. Always was. The Riley hood from uh, the Challenger. God. I can't wait to see the 440 under here. I'm gonna have to work on the holes here for the Dodge nameplate. I know it should have been done before the paint, but anyways, I've done it once before. I'll do it again and I'll get it on perfect. Check this out, eh? My God, does it look like a Challenger now or what? Wow. Starting to look like a car already. I guess we're gonna start shooting very soon, the way he's going. Finally getting painted. Wow. What a relief to see it getting done. There it is. I finally see the car white, finally. Alpine white. Beautiful white. Beautiful. It is what it is. Alpine white. There it is. It's getting his first coat of paint. Oh yeah. Can't wait to see it done. Bring it to my shop. This is something. Imagine that, eh? From a basket case to a finished product. Well, finished product, I mean body-wise, but uh, gone a long way from the, the day we bought it here and put it all together. It seems pretty quick because uh, my body, I was on it 24-7, practically almost day and night on it to do the metal work and the paint. And here it is, a finished product. You're gonna have rhythm when you paint. He's got the rhythm. He goes with the flow of the body. He holds the gun and goes with the lines. Awesome. Let's you know when you have a painter knows what he's doing. Look at that. We're gonna end up putting five layers of paint and I believe four coats of clear. So in total, that's nine coats. Okay, back in the days we were painted with enamel, but the day we used clear coat, but it doesn't bother me. I still love it, no matter what, it's gonna be what it is. Nine coats of paint. Nick has to tear himself away from his dream car for a while. There are other people's dreams waiting for his attention back at the shop. Here's something different. We have taken a Hemi out of this uh, 70 style, right? And uh, we're installing a 440. My, my client put the uh, Hemi on the side to put it for sale in the future. So in the meantime, he wants to put a 440 in his car to uh, drive it as it is. This is our junkyard dog 440. We just wanted to build a simple 440, parts from everywhere, and here it is, all assembled. Big Al's satellite won't have a Hemi to melt the tires anymore. So he has to take off the old front plate. 
Luckily, he's found a good replacement. While Vasily works at getting the junkyard dog 440 stuffed into Al's car, Nick and his brother Phil are in the engine room, sweating the details on current and future builds. This is where the science gets done, as Nick gets the best out of every engine he puts together. I've got a cylinder head here, uh, factory casting, uh, 452 casting, which is a late 70s uh, or mid 70s uh, casting from a 440 Chrysler product. I installed the spark plug, I installed the two valves, I put a little bit of thick oil in the valve between the head and the valve so that it doesn't seep through when I'm going to put a liquid on it. Because I want to measure the cc's in the combustion chamber. This is how we figure out part of our compression ratio as we assemble an engine. So we do this. We put this on a little angle. I put a little bit of uh, engine lube, which uh, reacts as a sealer, right here. And I use this. I use this uh, milling uh, lube that uh, works well for me. It's just like a. It's a, okay. It's an engine assembly, but as I use it, uh, it also works as a sealer when I want to do uh, CCs on a cylinder head, and it works fine. Then you get your plate. We take a flat piece. So as you can see, we have our valves in, our spark plug in place. The head has a little bit tilt. Yes, you see that? Push it down flat. That's it, and that's a hole so we can fill in the liquid. And the liquid we're using is 50% water, 50% alcohol. And then I put a food coloring in it to give it some color. In this case, we have some blue. And here we've got a graduated cylinder measures from zero to 250 cc's. Now, well, I don't know what this is gonna take. I'm sure it's gonna take a lot less than 250. And here we go. Put it over here and we start filling. And watch how it fills up the chamber. And that is so cool. This is a mechanical readings we're doing. Not still the pressure. Compression ratio. See, we're almost filled up. Keep going. You want to make sure you have no air bubbles and you want to fill it up right up to the hole. Like so. Oop. And there we go. And you see, now we filled it up to the top. And now we put it back here. And here is, this is what's going to tell us what our cubic centimeters is in our combustion chamber on this factory casting 440 cylinder head. So here we go. We start at the zero, 25, 50, 75, 80, 85, 86, 87. We're practically 88 cc's in this combustion chamber. And from what I know, that's a factory cc when the head is not milled at all. So we have a nice virgin head here and uh, we have something nice to start with. So what we have here is a factory casting, as it is from the factory. We just made a measurement, and as the book say, a factory casting is 88 cc on a 452 casting like we have here. So now we know the number of the cylinder head. And now right here, we got a 440 engine with a flat top piston. We put the piston at top dead center, which is a zero deck. And then of course, we want to measure compression ratio. The compression ratio is the ratio between a cylinder's minimum and maximum volume. We got 88 cc's in the combustion chamber. We have a zero deck, as you can see here, which is exactly even with the deck. And also we have to minus six cc's on the uh, valve reliefs. We have to also know the thickness of the gasket. Are we using a 20 thou? Are we using a 39? Then we need to know the bore and the stroke and the bore of the gasket. Once Nick has all the measurements from the engine in his shop, he feeds them into a compression ratio calculator on the computer. And let's see what we've got. We've got a 10.22 compression ratio on this particular engine. So if I were to leave the head as it is without milling it down, that is the compression ratio we're going to have, a 10.22. And there it is, folks. That is how you calculate compression ratio on an engine. Simple, basic math. And now it's mail time. Let's see what came in this week. 
And here we got one from George from North Carolina. Here is a flag from the state of North Carolina. George and Sheila. Thank you, George and Sheila. Thank you very much. And here we got one from Scott. And it's an APO package. It was part of uh, probably diplomatic or uh, military. Let's be careful we don't cut the flag. Oh, what do we got here? Okay, and this is from Scott. And he's in uh, greetings from South Korea. Wow. Scott, thank you very much, man. This is really awesome. Thank you. All the way to South Korea. Thank you. Wow. Check this out. Army. United States. Loyalty. Wow. Hey, Scott, thank you very much. I thought it'd be a flag, but you know what? This is beautiful. Awesome. And look at that. A few days after Remembrance Day. Nice. Thank you, Scott. Here's another flag. I believe this is a flag. This is from John, all the way from Florida. Check it out. Oh, we got two things here. The state of Florida. Here it is. Thank you very much, John. We also have something else here. I wonder what this is. Wow. Ah, this is the happy face flag, eh? Happy face, why not? Thank you, John. Uh, from Archie, from Texas. And I believe he's a big viewer on our channel. You throw in a lot of comments on my channel. You guys, don't forget to like and subscribe while you're watching my channel, eh? Enjoy your show very much. Archie, thank you. Thank you, Archie. All the flags that came in from Texas are all large like this one. Oh my God. And you know, I heard that everything's big in Texas. And here it is. Thank you, Archie. Here we have another one. And this is from Mark from the state of New York. Okay, another letter. Greetings from your neighbor to the south. Best of luck to you, Project Car, best wishes, Mark. Mark, thank you very much from New York. We've got a project here also from New York. And now we got the flag, the flag of New York State, just south of the border of Quebec, right next door to our neighbors. Here we are, New York State. And here's another one. And this one comes from Al from BC. Here it is. Good stuff, keep it up. Al from British Columbia. Here it is, the flag of British Columbia. Thanks, Al. And if you want to send anything to the uh, Mixed Garage, you can find all the information and the address on the About page on our channel. We've been getting quite a few flags lately, and I, I wouldn't mind having a flag from every country in the world, or state, province, county, district, whatever. You send it to me, and I'll with pleasure, I'll put it up in my shop. Take care.